Hello there, everyone. My name is uh, Anthony uh, Pagnano. I'm going to be doing a, uh, a YouTube series uh, every uh, Wednesday night. Um, new show. I'm, I'm, I'm going into sports radio. I hope to be a sports radio host one day. Uh, a little bit of background on me. Uh, I live uh, here in Monroe, North Carolina. I am a huge New York sports fan. Um, and, you know, I just, I, I'm, I'm going into sports radio. Uh, my hero is uh, Scott Farrell. I, I I love Mr. Farrell. He's a uh, he's a great sports radio host, and I hope I can be like him one day on uh, on CBS Sports Radio. Uh, as I said, I'm a huge uh, New York sports fan. Uh, big into the New York Rangers. As you can see, I'm uh, representing them here tonight. Uh, we got a huge win, and I'll talk about that here in just a minute. Uh, big Giants fan, as well as the Mets and the Knicks. Uh, the only uh, team that I'm not a, uh, the only area that I'm not a fan of New York sports in would be uh, in college sports. Uh, we don't really have a college team up in New York, so uh, I, from being down here, one of my best friends, uh, he he got me into college sports, and I become a huge uh, North Carolina Tar Heel fan. Um, uh, so. Uh, just a little bit about uh, my social media. Uh, you can follow me at uh, on Twitter at, at Future Tar Heel. Uh, my name will be Anthony Pagnata. And Instagram uh, at Anthony uh, underscore Pagnata96. Uh, um, so as I mentioned, uh, the New York Rangers. I'm a huge New York Rangers fan. And we'll start out with the NHL playoffs. I, uh, I, I watched the entire game tonight. Uh, it was a great game. Uh, great finish. I mean, if, if anyone watched it... Uh, and if you're a New York Ranger fan, you know who I'm talking about, Derek Stepan. What, what, a, what an unbelievable goal there at the end. Uh, I'm so happy for him. I, I absolutely love the kid. He's, he's a great young player, uh, and I think he, he, he really he played a good series. I love that line that was out there. And um, I was skeptical of the line that they had sent out there for, for that last shift uh, because I didn't really know. You know they had, he hadn't won a lot of face-offs uh, throughout the entire night, and... You know, I, he didn't really win the faceoff. It kind of got deflected. We got lucky. We got a scrap. And, uh, you know, we just came out with the puck. Uh, got a shot from the point that uh, Holpe made a great save on and kicked out. And Stefan was there and, and, and put an unbelievable shot in the back of the net uh, to send us on after we were down 3-1 in a series that I'm pretty sure everyone thought was was over. Um, I know I did. I know I was uh, I was one of those fans that thought, oh, the Rangers are, are in trouble. Um you know the the way we had played in the in the first four games of the series was was just un, unacceptable. You know that's not going to win you a series. And in, and in game five we we took until the last minute of the game to score with uh, Chris Kreider, uh, but we got into overtime and we got a huge win. And you know now we're we're moving on and we're going to play Tampa. And uh, you know I know Tampa is going to be a tough team, but we got to you know as a Ranger fan I believe that we can we can keep going and we can move on. Uh, and, and get back to the cup, and, and, and this time I think we've got a really good chance um, to win it. Uh, you know, and, and such a great series, uh, probably one of the best series I've seen in a long time. Um, I have to I have to give it up to to the Washington Capitals, um, Alexander Ovechkin. You know, I, I I absolutely whenever I watch the games, I I, I do not like uh, Alexander Ovechkin, but he is he is a good player. Uh, you know, he plays with heart. Um, you can see it every time he's on the ice, and uh, Braden Holpe. You know we we faced him, you know the last couple of years in the playoffs, and he is he's growing into one of the best goaltenders in the Eastern Conference, if not in the NHL. Uh, he showed us in this series that he's just that good, um, and I give a lot of credit to him. I think they got a really good coach in Barry Trotz, um, but the Rangers are on now, and now they got to play the Tampa Bay Lightning. I'll start with that series as I, I'm, I'm going to break down both series a little bit here, not too much, because uh, I know most of my fan base that watches this won't be won't be uh, really into hockey. But I, I, it's just a, such a passion for me. Um, but we'll start with the Rangers. They play the uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning, who uh, they did not beat at all this year. Uh, we played them three games, and and they really they hammered us uh, most of the time. Um, you know, it was. You know they have a lot of our old players, uh, and I, I think emotionally that we didn't play as well as we should have been playing. Um, I think we were, you know, we we wanted to be buddy buddy, especially in the first game. You know, we had a, you know, we were, you know, the players were seeing, you know, all the old guys that had come back like Strawman and Boyle and uh, Callahan. So 
you know, I think uh, at that point, you know, guys were a little bit emotional. But, you know, the, the, the other two games, we just uh, we didn't come out and play well. And, um, I mean, you look at all the stats, and everything says that the Rangers probably should lose. I mean, uh, Ben Bishop's 8-0 against the Rangers. He's never lost uh, to us. Um, we, we've never really played them well. We've always struggled whenever we play them. Um, Stamkos is getting going for, for the Lightning. Tyler Johnson is just an amazing young kid. I think that's one of the up-and-coming stars in this league. Um, they have you know great defensemen that have been there a while. Victor Hedman's a really good defenseman that I think uh, you know the Rangers are, are going to have problems with. He's a big, big guy. Uh, and the Rangers don't do well when they play against guys that are really, really big. Um, we've, we've seen that evidenced when we played teams like Boston. When we played teams like L.A., we've struggled when we got guys that are really, really big um, going up against us. Uh, you know, there's you know, a couple other key aspects, I, I think, in the series. I mean, you know, goaltending is going to be key. Um, I don't know if it will be as good of a goaltending match as maybe we saw in this last series for the Rangers. Um, but I, I, you know, I know I believe in Henrik Lundqvist. I think Henrik's going to have a great series. And uh, and as for Bishop, I mean, he's played well in the playoffs so far. And uh, I, I really think he's going to he's going to come out and he's going to play well um, in this series as well. And I, you know, the Rangers, we we just got to get more shots on. We got to be consistent on the power play. Um, and as for Tampa, they just got to play the way they've been playing. You know, play um, their their style of hockey. And, uh, you know, that's, I think, what it is. You know, whoever plays their style of hockey ends up winning. If you give in to the other side, you're, you're going to lose. That's in any sport. Um, but in the end, you know, I think, uh, I think home ice advantage really helps the Rangers. Um, we, don't, we don't usually win the first two at home. You know, that's not really how it works. I mean, we know we got the first two, but that's just not our style. Um, I think we'll win game one, we'll lose game two and then uh, go into Tampa and either we'll, we'll take I, – I would think we could take one there uh, and we'll come back series tied 2-2 and from there we just got to turn the garden into our home ice advantage and if we get a game seven on our ice, which I think we will, um, I think Lundqvist will be able to step up. Uh, guys have to play well in the series for, for both sides. St. Louis has to step up. I know it's against his former team and I hope that can be some motivation for him because – so far in the playoffs, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, Marty's really struggled. I mean, it's been it's been unbelievably hard to watch him out there. I mean, he just he doesn't seem like he knows. He seems lost. He seems like it's, the age is really setting in uh, and starting to hurt him. Um, you know, tonight they had uh, J T. Miller take over on his line for a while. Um, so hopefully, hopefully he's able to get out there and, and prove something against his old team and, and show that he can, he can get it going. You know, he's got good line mates. I really like him on that line with Broussard and Nash, who I think have been playing well. They were former teammates, so they know, you know, how to play with each other. And Broussard's been on a hot streak. He's got five goals in the playoffs, uh, tied with Chris Kreider, uh, who I, I think has become our best player. I really do. He's so physical. Um, he can score goals. He's a leader. I mean, you can see him out there on the ice. He's just a, a calming presence uh, when he's on the ice, and I get excited every time he jumps on the ice. It's, it's, you're just wondering what's going to happen. Do, do we have a chance to score? And uh, for Tampa, I think you know Johnson's going to be a key. Um, Bishop's got to be able to maintain what he's got. I mean, I know it's tough. You know, the playoffs are, are, are a totally different thing, especially in the in the Eastern Conference Finals. I mean, you don't just walk in there and say, well, you know, I've played well all season, and, and I think I'm just going to walk in here and really handle uh, the Rangers. I don't think that's how it works. I mean, we've been there before. Uh, they've never been there before. Most of their players haven't been there before. Um, I think Stamkos has to play well uh, once again in the series. And, uh, you know, I think they have to be able to get in there and, and, and draw penalties because if they can draw penalties, they can affect us because their power play is, is pretty good, um, you know, a, as we've seen. And in the other series, uh, you know, the Rangers uh, and or the Lightning will either face the Blackhawks or the Anaheim Ducks. And you take your picks of who you want there. It's two teams that are extremely offensive um, you know, we've seen uh, the bounce back, the, the the bounce back and forth between goaltenders in Chicago. You started with Corey Crawford. You got Scott Darling, who was playing really, really well. They put him in, and he couldn't hold it, so they went back to Crawford, which I think was the right move. I don't think they ever should have really taken out Crawford because Crawford's won a Stanley Cup. He's won two. Uh, no, he didn't win. The, no, he did not win the first one. That's my bad. He won the. He, he did win the second one though. The second one they won a couple of years ago. He did win that one. Um, you know, and for them, it, it's their key players. It's it's the same guys that always step up. It's Taves, it's Kane, it's you know you got the you got great defensemen and Duncan Keith and and 
Brent Seabrook, Nicholas Jalmerson, who I really like. You know, they've got so many good young players. Brandon Saad, who's a good player that can step up. Patrick Sharp's always in on it. Marion Hosa. I mean, they're just so loaded, uh, you know, all over. They have such good offense. And, uh, you know, I think they, they, they really stand a good chance. Now, the thing is, Anaheim's offense is really good, too. you got Corey Perry, who's a, 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 just a lightning scorer. I mean, the dude's got a great shot. Um, he's really showing his leadership here. you got Ryan Getzlaff, who people don't realize he was on that Stanley Cup team back in 03. It's been a long time. Uh, but Getzlaff's still there. He's still the captain. I mean, he's, he is, he's been there a long time, and he's a good player. they got Ryan Kessler, who I think is great. Um, you know, I, I've never really watched him a whole lot with Vancouver, uh, but I really, really liked him with Team USA. Um, and then, you know, the, you know, the goaltending for them has, has, has been, you know, decent with Frederick Anderson. Nothing, nothing great. Um, but, you know, the fact that they beat Calgary in five, I think, is huge. Uh, it helps them out because Chicago won in four. An easy sweep of, of, the, uh, of the wild. That was never really close. And, you know, I think Chicago, Chicago's got what they want. I mean, they, they, they've had guys that have had experience in the Cup. They, you know, they, they're just two years removed from winning a Cup. And, you know, it, it's a bounce back and forth pattern between them and the Kings. You know, they bounce back and forth between going to the Cup, and usually they end up winning it if they get there. Um, and, you know, but in the end, I think that's going to be another interesting series. I think that one goes six, though, and I think uh, Chicago's going to win that one. I really do think that the Blackhawks are, are really that good. And, uh, you know, X factors in, in that series, I would say Crawford would be the X factor definitely for Chicago. How does he play? How does he deal with, uh, with Perry, with Kessler, with Getzlaff, with all these goal scorers that can come on the ice. You know, they've got good defensemen that score. Cam Fowler's a really good player. Uh, you got Frederick Boscherman that can play. Um, you know, so I think, I think a really good uh, series that we'll see out there, I think both of them are going to be really good. But I'll take the, uh, the Rangers in seven, I'll take the Blackhawks uh, in six to get to the Stanley Cup final. I won't make any other predictions past that, but I say the Rangers and Blackhawks will play. So I know I've been going on a lot about the, uh, the NHL, and uh, I know, you know a lot of people don't like hockey, um, so I'll move on to a more interesting topic. Now, I don't know how many people are going to love this topic, because I'm assuming we've heard a lot about this. It's been on SportsCenter nonstop. I mean, every day they have a feature that they do on it, someone new coming out, a start of an appeal process or something. Um, yes, I'm talking about Brady's suspension. Um, you know, Tom Brady is one of the best quarterbacks to ever play in the National Football League. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, you know, all, almost all of his Super Bowl rings are tainted. Uh, they say the first, the first one was the, the spy cam, uh, you know, that they were spying on, uh, on St. Louis and Spygate, which they say dates back long, long before the Jets brought it to their attention uh, and got them in trouble for that. Uh, you know, and then, um, you know, you, had the, the, you have this, the, the deflate gate. Uh, which is huge. I mean, it's a huge thing uh, in football. I mean, it, it, it's unbelievable that they would actually, you know, that they got caught uh, doing it because it's really hard. I mean, every every team in the, NF, in the NFL does it. I mean, we know all these quarterbacks, you know, uh, Aaron Rodgers came out and made a statement saying that, you know, he likes his ball a certain way. He likes his overinflated, uh, which I found really interesting. Uh, but, you know, every, every team does it. I mean, every team, you want the ball to fit you know, your quarterback to where you have the most success throwing the ball. So I think, you know, they got caught. I don't think the NFL was out to get them, uh, per se. I think Ted Wells took his time on the investigation. But I think ultimately it ends up hurting them because people are out to say, well, they're trying to ruin uh, Brady's legacy by doing this. Um, I mean, you know, the thing is, like, you, you can't rush a report like that, I understand. But if it came out before the Super Bowl, I think it would have, you know, he wouldn't have been suspended for the Super Bowl. I really don't believe the NFL would do that. Uh, it, it, if anything, just because they did, they would want the ratings to stay high. Um, but I, I do think, you know, the the punishment was fair. I think four games was was really fair um, to the crime that was done. And I know I saw a lot of comparisons to the Ray Rice thing with only two games, and I understand that. I, I do think that Ray Rice should have gotten more. Um, you know, but you know. It, it's a serious issue. You know, it's something that alters the outcome of a football game. Having underinflated balls. Now, I mean, it, it, it is a little bit strange that, you know, they found them, you know, uh, when, when the Patriots weren't having success. I mean, the Patriots weren't blowing them out at that point. When they got the regulation balls in, that's when the Patriots took over. 
Uh, but still, you know, they were trying to manipulate him, and Brady lied. I mean, Brady, all you have to do is tell the truth. If you know that you're innocent or you know that they're not at least going to find something, all you got to do is say, yeah, I knew who these guys were. Um, just, ex you know, I mean, if you, if you admit to it, you're, not, you're probably not suspended. Or if you are, it's, it's a lesser suspension. Um, uh, the appeal, though, I, I think he will, I mean, you know, they've got the appeal process. I think it will be lessened. I think it will be two games. Um, but that's still big because the first two games of the year, they got a tough one. The Steelers on opening night, I mean, opening night is never easy, but I think they are at a slight advantage. Um, you know, Pittsburgh, people say, well, Pittsburgh's going to come in there and, and run over Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, you know, come week one. I, I don't think so, you know, because they don't have tape on Jimmy Garoppolo. All you can see is one game uh, against Kansas City, really, where he had extensive playing time. Um and, I, you know, unless you're going off his college tape, which ain't going to prove much because, you know, it's different It's different receivers, it's different players, you know, surrounding him. So I think there will be – I think he has a chance to be good. I think Pittsburgh, you know, they don't have anything to go off of. And it's the first game of the year, so both sides are going to come out a little tentative. But, you know, ultimately that's going to be a tough game. And then they go on the road to Buffalo, which will just be one of their toughest games of the year. Without Brady, you got Rex Ryan, who's been, you know, he's been, you know, messing with Brady for years. Um, you know, he's had under-talented teams that have gone in there and really challenged the Patriots. So, you know, I think in the end it'll work out uh, for the Patriots because I think he's only going to get two games. They could lose the first two games, and I don't think it's going to matter. They'll still win that division because no one else in that division is consistent enough. Um, but, you know, I, I think it'll be lessened. And, uh, you know, as for Jimmy Garoppolo, I know I watched, a, uh, you know, some of his college tape. I watched a couple of his, his, playoff, his FCF playoff games when he was at Eastern Illinois. The kid's good. I mean, he threw 58 touchdowns his senior year in, in college. I don't, I really don't care that it was in the FCS. I don't think anyone should care about that because, it's college football. It's any version of football. The guy threw 58 touchdowns. They, there are people in high school that don't even touch that number. Uh, you know, I mean, and that's just nuts. And he's come in. He's been behind Brady. He's seen Brady. I know it's only a year, but he's learned from him. He's, you know, he's learned what Brady does. I'm assuming Brady's trying to mentor, mentor him. And, uh, you know, he's got a, a talent set of his own. And he's got, you know, good offensive players around him. Not great offensive players, but good enough offensive players where he'll be able to, to, to make decisions and be able to trust that his players around him will, will make the catches that he needs. They'll be able to run the ball a good enough amount. Um, and I, you know, the defense isn't going to be that bad, so I think it'll help him out in, in that area. And as for, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of things about, well, the tainted legacy of Tom Brady and all that. Look, Tom Brady, look, they are not going to take the rings away from Tom Brady. Someone, I, I was seeing on Twitter people saying, well, they should take away the rings from Brady. You know, he should only have one or two. No, no. The man earned the, the rings. He did not cheat in the Super Bowl. They checked the, you know, those are, you know, NFL regulated balls. They, they have guys that take care of them. And especially after that issue came to light, there were people inspecting those balls every time they came back to the sideline. I mean, they were all over it. So, you know, I think... It won't affect his legacy. I think four Super Bowl rings. I, I, I think he is one of the greatest of all time. I have him second behind Joe Montana because Joe Montana, he, he, won, he won four, but he won them in, you know, in only four tries. He went there four times, and he did it four times. You know, Brady should have six. I'm a Giants fan, um, and, but I know Brady should have six. Uh, you know, the, he, he did his job in those Super Bowls. Uh, they weren't really his fault. Um, you know, but there were the the Giants defense was able to affect him in those games and keep him from having six. But I think four keeps him up there, and I don't think any of them should be taken away uh, from him. And I, I think the same from Belich for Belichick's legacy. I don't think anything's taken away from Bill Belichick. I, 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 I you know, I don't like Bill Bill, Bill Belichick. I think he is. You know, he's he's just not really, you know, he's a good coach. He's a, I mean, not even a good coach. He's a great coach. My bad. He is a very, very great coach. I think he's one of the best of all time. Uh, I, I, th I would rank him easily ahead of most of the coaches out there. But at the same time, you know, I just, I, his personality is just so dislikable. I mean, that's the thing about him. But when you, when you look at his stats, his legacy should still be up there. He's still one of the greatest coaches of all time. 
And, uh, you know, so ultimately, I think in the end, they'll be fine. I think Brady's a first ballot Hall of Famer. I think Belichick is as well. Um, and I still think Brady's got plenty of years, you know, left. I, I think he's got two or three, easy, probably up to four. Um, you know, and this will give, you know, it gives Garoppolo a chance. And it gives them a chance to see what they got. Because... You know, we never knew what Matt Castle could become. Now, they were a good team that year, and they, they, you know, they barely missed the playoffs. But this gives Garoppolo a chance to get in there, get some game experience. And uh, I know it's not the best way to be thrown out there, but it works out uh, for him that he's got a summer, that this didn't take a, long, you know, a longer amount of time to where he wouldn't be able to learn with these players and get to know his receivers and you know, the, the, the playbook really well. Um, so I think he's got a summer to prepare, and I think he'll be, uh, he'll be, it'll work out for him. Uh, so now we move on. We, we talked about the Brady suspension. Uh, you know, let's get that out of the way. Now we move on to the NBA playoffs. And, uh, you know, the NBA playoffs have been pretty interesting. The first round was a little bit slow until we got, you know, that great, great, great series between the Clippers and Spurs. That's one of the best series I've ever seen. Um, you know, May 2nd was supposed to be all about the fight, uh, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Not too much. But it, it turned into being about... The Clippers and the Spurs and that shot that Chris Paul hit at the end to send them through, and you know we'll start with the Spurs with the uh, excuse me the Clippers and the Rockets. What a series that has been, uh, you know, for the Clippers definitely. I mean the Clippers came out they they got out to that three one lead. Um, I mean they're feeling good. I think the Clippers really think they have a chance to win this title. Uh, you know, just the way they're playing, they're playing so strong. You know, they won a game without Chris Paul in the lineup. Uh, you know, and they played fantastic in that game without him in there um you know they lost you know they lost a tough one to have the series tied at one and then came back with two great ones uh back at home uh and that was that was great you know they got beat by houston uh in 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 game five and it wasn't really close uh you know i mean it, it, that series has been a weird series it started out with like you know, a couple of close games at the start, and the last three have just been blowouts. But I think going into game six, I, I had the Clippers winning. I think it'll be a close game, but I had the Clippers moving on to the conference finals because it is at home. I know they struggled against San Antonio at home, but I just got a feeling it's a different series. I think Houston put a lot into trying to keep this series alive. Um, you know, but you never know. I mean, the comebacks can happen. You know, 3-1 is not as big of a deficit. We've seen it in in many sports where where three one is not as big of, as bad of a deficit as it has been um and i think houston can give them a fight and if houston wins that game going back to houston james harden on his home floor would be tough i'd still take uh la but I, it'd be a really tough uh you know one to pick out there but i'd still think that you know i'd take the clippers and i think they're they're going to keep fighting and they're going to be good um you know, you got that one. And then out in the, you know, the other one out in the Western Conference, just finishing up, I've been watching that. If I've been looking up, uh, that's that's why I was watching the end and, you know, uh, watching some of the highlights because I missed the early part of the game. But the Grizzlies and the uh, and the Warriors, that's been a great series uh, early on. I mean, you know, it looked, I was 2-1 in the series, and it looked as if the Grizzlies had, you know, a chance to pull away. They were going in. They were up 2-1 going into Game 4, going into the FedEx Forum, which they are really good at home. I mean, they, they are really good. They've got some of the best fans uh, up in Memphis, uh, you know, out there in Memphis. Uh, just great fans. They really have no other sports out there, and they really put it all into that basketball team. And, uh, you know, I thought they were going to go 3-1, but the Warriors did a great job fighting back, and then they came back tonight and just played a great game. They, they beat uh, Memphis into the ground in this game. Just, you know unbelievable the threes were going down they were throwing up alley-oops um you know Andrew Bogut played really well he looked really good out there Andre Iguodala had a couple of dunks that I was like well he's throwing it back in time maybe just a little bit uh Curry's playing well as as he always does uh Clay Thompson hit this ridiculous three where he got fouled I could not believe that they're just showing it right here I am I, I'm just amazed at that shot and he's playing well um, you know, one of my Carolina boys, I think uh, Harrison Barnes is playing well. So, uh, you know, it goes back to Memphis. And I think Memphis will win at home because Memphis, uh, you know, they've been there before. They're composed. they got a good point guard. I really like Mike Connolly. I think uh, Marcus Saul is a good player. And, you know, but I think the Warriors will take it back to Game 7. And in the Oracle, uh, you know, that that is that is just a disaster to try to go in there and win a game, and I don't think there's any way they do it. I think the Clippers will, uh, excuse me, the Clippers, 
My bad. The Warriors will move on to play the Clippers. That's my bad. Uh, but it's going to be, you know, I think it'll be a good series. It'll go seven. Uh, and then, you know, when they get in there, the Clippers and Warriors, that'll be a great series. As for the Eastern Conference, who would have thought this would actually say, hey, there's interesting basketball going on out in the Eastern Conference. And I'll start with the lesser one because I want to talk about the better one. Uh, you know, second. I'll start with the Hawks and the Wizards. That game was played tonight. A great tip in with 1.9 seconds. Al Horford just did a great job underneath getting that rebound and putting it back up. Um, and I think Atlanta's taken over. I really think they'll go into Washington and they'll win that, they'll win that game. And uh, they'll win it in six and move on to play in the conference finals. Um, you know, Washington gave a heck of a fight. Got to give it up to them. They, they really fought hard um, all night, all night. I, you know, I, I just I have to give it up to them. Uh, but they just, you know, they just couldn't get it done. I like seeing John Wall back in in there because there's no excuses now. You know, there's no saying, well, I mean, I know people will say, well, he, he's probably still injured, but he's fighting back. He's trying to play. And, uh, you know, they, they gave an effort tonight, and they just couldn't pull it out. I think, you know, they're still a little bit too young. I know Pierce is there. He's got that veteran leadership. He's been there. He's won, you know, an, an NBA title, Oh, you know. That's but the thing is, you know, you got Beal, still a young player. It's going to be great. Wall, who I think is going to be one of the best point guards to play in the NBA in a long time. He's going to be talented, and it's great seeing all these these great point guards going at it. Um, but on the other side, you just got consistent play, and Atlanta. You know, they've got some good players. They got guys like Horford. They got guys like Teague who really want to come out there and play. Corver, who is an unbelievable three-point shooter, and then you got a guy in Paul Millsap who was decent out in Utah, never really became anything big, and now, I mean, he's out there working hard. He's a starter. He plays well every night. Got Damari Carroll, who is never really a big player. He's found a home there, and that team is good, and they're a tough place to play. I mean, Atlanta's becoming one of those teams out in the East. I mean, they were always decent under Mike Woodson, never could make a run, but, you know, they've got a good coach in there now. You know, he comes from the Spurs you know, coaching line. So he's got that built in. He's 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 got that that just that fire when it comes to the playoffs to get in there and play hard. And I think they'll move on. Uh, I I say they move on. They win Game Six and they'll move on uh, to play the winner of the Cavs and the Bulls, uh, which means we're going to move on into that series. That's a great series. Um, before the s- series started, you know, everyone was saying, "Well, there's no no chance that uh, that that." Cleveland's going to win it. Kevin Love's done. Um, you know, and, and, and that was it. But then you get the, you know, a couple of uh, huge plays here. Uh, excuse, me, excuse me. You get a couple of huge uh, turns of events. Uh, you know, they came out and, and, and they played well. I think LeBron's really showing up. Kyrie Irving's showing he can be a good, you know, he can, he can be a role player. Uh, you know, J.R. Smith was suspended for the first two games, but he came back. Um, and they've been playing well since. You know, they've won the last two in the series. Um, most people think it's over, but, you know, Pau Gasol is going to try to come back. I think that was one of the big reasons they won uh, Game 5, and it, it didn't matter. I mean, they were up huge on the Bulls, and they came back. I mean, they, they fought. Jimmy Butler's a heck of a player. Uh, Got to like the way he played, but LeBron was just flying around out there on the court. He had those huge, a couple of huge blocks, including that one late in the game, and you know, that really helped him. And I think, you know, if they can get Gasol back, I don't think he's going to be 100%. That's the only thing that, that you know, keeps me from saying, well, they're going to be great. If he if that hamstring's good enough and he's back to about 90, they can give him a run. Because uh, Derrick Rose is playing fantastic. Um, like I said, Jimmy Butler's playing well. But, you know, if he's not uh, at least at 90%, you know, this series is over, I think they'll win it in six. Uh, but I don't think it is. I think they go in there. I think Gasol plays decent. I think Rose really shows up, and they send it back to Cleveland for a game seven where I think LeBron just takes over him and Kyrie. It's a close game, but in the end they pull away, and I, I have them winning in seven and advancing on to play the Hawks. Um, a series that, you know, we thought we would probably see uh, just because the way the layout is. You know, you knew Washington would be up there or maybe Toronto, either one of them, but they wouldn't really give uh, Atlanta as great of a run and beat them. Um, so we'll get them in there, and, and I think, you know, that'll be a good series. Uh, and, you know, we'll break that down as, as we go along. Uh, you know, we'll probably that we'll, we'll have those series starting next week. We have the NHL starting uh, on Saturday the, is the first game of that, so we'll be talking more about that next week. Um, move on to the MLB season. 
Uh, baseball, it's been pretty interesting uh, at the start of the season. We've got a couple of teams that are really overachieving out of the gate, uh, but we'll start with the team that I, I, you know, everyone knew was going to come out and start the season really well. Uh, you would think in in St. Louis, teams just you know they've been doing it every year, and it's kind of like hockey. You know how I explained with L.A. and uh, and uh, excuse me, Chicago. That's what I was looking for. Uh, Chicago. You know those two go back and forth. Uh, every year, and it seems like it's them and the Giants that go back and forth every year. And I think this year, I said before the season, I said to one of my buddies, "This is this is St. Louis's year." And he said, "I hope not." But they've come out, they've started so well. Michael Walker is just a great pitcher. I, I really like that dude. And the fact that you know they lost Wainwright, and they're still going. You know, they still come out there, they still play great. Uh, you know, they've got some real good players that just you know they don't have superstars. Matt Holiday is a good player. Uh, Matt Carpenter is a good player. None of these guys, you know, are stars. Yadier Molina is a good catcher. No one that you're saying, well, these guys are the superstars of the sport. They're the faces of the sport. But they come out, they win games, and right now, you know, they're the best team in baseball uh, up near the top. Um, you got another one out in the NL. My my Mets are, are, have been playing well. They they lost again tonight, so they're down to 20 and 14. Maybe starting to kick in. I mean, they got swept by the Cubs. I would hope not. Matt Harvey played, you know, pitched a great game again tonight. You know, he went seven innings on, you know, zero earned runs. He was doing great. And, uh, you know, they pulled him and the bullpen blew it. You know, something that we've we've witnessed, you know, walking in a run late, just unacceptable. Uh, you know, I don't know, hey, Roos Familius had a great year, but, you know, something you wish you wouldn't have to see walking in a run, uh, you know. But I just hope it's not. The, this downward trend that we've seen with the Mets. You know, they're leading the division despite the Nationals coming on. Bryce Harper's been playing unbelievable. I mean, uh, you know, so many people have, have, have gotten, you know, just, just kind of left him in the dust, you know, uh, after last season saying, well, he's got injury problems. He's just not playing up to potential. And, uh, you know, he's hit, I believe he's one homer shy of tying what he had uh, for last year's tour. I think he had 12 maybe unless he hit one tonight and he's got 13 or 14 at this point. I mean, the man's just blasting them. He had five homers in two games. I mean, the guy was on fire, uh, and he's still on fire, and they're playing some great baseball. Um, you know, they've got a good pitcher in, Scher in uh, Scherzer, excuse me. Uh, he got a huge contract in the offseason, and people were criticizing it, saying, well, he won't be as good as they expect, and I think he's lived up to expectations. Now, Strasburg's struggling. Um, you know, he, he's really he got rocked by the Diamondbacks last night. That was unbelievable to see that. He is just, you know, that, that that Tommy John surgery, I think, really hurt him. And, uh, you know, I hate to say it, but I think his career's over. I mean, I'm a Mets fan, and, you know, the Nationals are not my favorite team. But, uh, you know, the kid was a good pitcher. He really had his stuff. And, you know, I don't, it just doesn't seem like he's as, he's as good as he used to be. Um, and, and it just it, it, it absolutely sucks for him because I know he, you know, he was supposed to be one of the better pitchers, um, and I hate it for him. Um, and then you get uh, out in the, you know, the NL West, nothing really going on. you got the Dodgers playing well as usual. Nothing going on with, like, Puig or anything, like nothing huge uh, with him. So nothing too great. But still, you know, uh, they're leading the division. And, uh, you know, I think ultimately it'll come down to them and, and St. Louis. Uh, but St. Louis will probably win it because, you know, Clayton Kershaw, he's just like Peyton Manning. He gets in the playoffs and he forgets how to pitch. Uh, you know, he can't win in the playoffs. Uh you know, and in baseball, you know, you got to count on your top guy. And, 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 you know, St. Louis has plenty of guys that they can consider uh, their top guy. And then we move on to the AL. A couple of interesting storylines out there. The Astros uh, are playing really well. I don't know where they've come from. Jose Altuve is just, you know, we saw him last year. I knew he was a good player. Uh, but they're kicking into high gear, and they are playing really well out in that AL West. I mean, they were supposed to finish in the basement, most people predicted. And right now, they're the only team out in the AL West that's playing consistent baseball. I mean, the team that was the favorite to win the World Series out in that division, uh, you know, L.A., I don't know if they were the favorite. It was them and, and Seattle were supposed to be really good. Neither one of them's really stepped up to the plate. Not here a whole lot about Mike Trout. Uh, I mean, Nelson Cruz is blasting homers out in Seattle, but they're just not, you know, they don't consistently win games. Um, you know, like they've been, like they, you know, like people think they're going to do. They never live up to expectations. 
Um, you know, so I, I think the Astros, I don't think they're going to win the division. I think it will eventually fizzle out. I think eventually L.A. will get up there and they'll win that division because, they're, you know, they've got good players. You know, and Trout, their pitching staff's good enough that I think they can get up there and eventually take it over as the season wears on. Uh, in the AL East, a little bit of an, you know, interesting thing. You know, I'll get into A-Rod a little bit more uh, later. I got that. That's my next topic I'm going to talk about. But, uh... You know, the, a the AL East, you know, the, the Yankees are leading the division. And, uh, you know, A-Rod is the reason why. I mean, he's the reason they are that good. I, I you know, I know Yankees fans um, hate to say it, um, even though I'm, 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 I think Yankees fans really appreciate what he's done for them to start the year. Um, but they're playing great. You know, base stealing wise, they're you know they 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 they're leading the league. You know, they they have speed on the base pads. Uh, if they get on with Ellsbury, with Gardner, who I think has played well. Uh, you know, the only thing that's bad about Gardner is that stash. I don't know what is going on. I don't know if he's a Ranger fan and he's growing up for the playoffs, but it just looks oh, it just looks disgusting. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, but you know. Um, the rest of that division has shocked me. You know, I really thought the Orioles were going to be good, and they just, I don't know if it's been, you know, what what has happened with them, and, you know, that great tr thing they had the other night when they came back to Camden Yards, they wore the special uniforms and everything like that, um, really liked, uh, you know, that, but they just haven't played, you know, w where I thought they would play. Manny Machado is still pretty good, but, you know, I thought they'd be leading that division for sh for sure, and, uh, you know, the Yankees have outplayed them, and they, you know, they're not even at 500, they're below 500. Um, and the Red Sox, everyone's preseason favorite, you know, many people said they were going to win the World Series, you know, they've got a great pitching staff going on, you know, they've really made some moves in the offseason, and, you know, after a bad year, they usually bounce back and can do something great, and they've been average, you know, they've kind of been like, not as bad as they were last year, but they've been, you know, up and down, nothing great, you know, no, nobody coming out and really putting on a show for them, uh, but, you know, but, you know, I, I think in the end, the, the Yankees will win that division because I really think they're going to stay consistent. They're, they've got enough. But the problem is, you know, when you got a guy like CC Sabathia, one of your top pitchers, who just got his first win, um, and, and you're leading the division, it says a lot more, I think, about uh, the rest of the team. I think he's struggling, uh, you know, to get all, to get going. And, and, and even the other night when he won the game, he wasn't great, um, you know, in the first inning. But he took over, got the win, because uh, they were they, – they just – Torch the Rays, who have started off bad. The Blue Jays aren't really that great either, uh, which, I mean, no, I don't think anyone expected that. Jose Bautista is not really going as nuts as, he's, as he has been going, so you just wonder, you know, if, if, if that run of, of Bautista playing well is over, and if it is, I mean, I think the Yankees could, could end up winning the division by a, a sizable margin if they can keep this up. Um, and in the AL Central, down a whole lot to talk about. The Tigers and the Royals are kind of going back and forth out there. You know, decent teams. The hot starts. I mean, they were all flying. I mean, they were great out of the gate, uh, and they've kind of evened out. Neither one of them's really had a, have a huge advantage. Uh, the rest of the division is kind of just holding back, uh, waiting. The Indians were supposed to be so good. At, at Sports Illustrated predicted them to win the World Series. Um, and uh, Corey Kluber, I know tonight he had an eight, he had an 18 strikeouts uh, in eight innings pitch. That's just that's just unbelievable. I mean that is a crazy number, uh, especially for him and, and and great for him because he's really struggled. Uh, the the reigning Cy Young out there, he's really had a tough season. And you know I hope the Indians can get back on track because I, I you know I do like the Indians. Uh, you know I want to see them play well, but yeah, ultimately that division is is, is a two team race as we've seen. Um, and from there, I, I do want to get back in. I said I would get into the A Rod thing. Um, I just really want to talk about, you know, the uh, the hit itself was was all, you know, was great. I sat there and watched it. I liked it. I, I loved it for him because I believe A Rod deserved it. He's worked hard to come back, and he's in great shape for how old he was, taking a year off, all the pressure that was on him, and he looks great. I mean, he looks like he really is one of the better players right now. In uh, in Major League Baseball, he's been consistent, which is something that you know I think everyone wanted. You know, everyone wanted a consistent, either good or bad, and he's been consistently good. Uh, you know, and it's blow. You know, it's up on Sports Center all the time, but it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Uh, I give it give that. Um, but you know, he's playing well, and he's really the reason they're there. And uh, the hit, I thought it was interesting. He had a, it was a great homer, and I. I 
I liked it, but I, I kind of hated it for him because it was in Boston, and uh, you know the dude the dude that caught the ball was an, you know just just with a uh, a horrible move, just a, just a crap move by him, uh, you know taking the ball and running out of the stadium and saying he wouldn't give it back to a Rod for no reason. I'm I'm just. I couldn't believe that. I know if I was a fan, I would give it back to him. Um, you know, I, I would admit I'd, I'd say, yeah, can I have a, something signed as just a return? And they would do that. You know, there's tons of people that have done that for, you know, milestone hits. But this guy took it and, and, and you know, he just ran, uh, you know, and, and refuses to give it back. Um, and, you know, people, then, then you get into the argument, well, does it count? Do you think it actually should count? I mean, and my thing is, you know, yeah, I think it should count. You know, it's it's similar to the Brady thing. You know, it, it he got caught, but he moved on. You know, he served his suspension. He served his time. He served a longer time than anyone else has had to serve for this, which I, I, I thought was, you know, they said, well, he was one of the chief guys. He lied to everyone. But I didn't think he deserved a whole year's suspension. But he's come back. He's done well. And I think he deserves it. You know, he, he hit the homer. And I think, yes, he is up there. He deserves the spot that he is at. Uh, you know, fourth on the all-time homer list, passing Willie Mays. Because my thing is, how do you know that Babe Ruth didn't use steroids? Back then, they didn't have anything as PED testing. I don't even know if they knew what PEDs were. So he could have been taking some sort of some sort of supplement that was helping him. Hank Aaron could have been taking some sort of supplement that was helping him. They never found out if those guys were clean. And that's the thing that I think just frustrates me the most about people saying that you can't go off of well, you know, you can, I, I don't think you can hold this grudge on a rod. It's something impressive. Look, he's never going to pass. Uh, I don't think he'll pass Ruth. I don't think he'll pass Aaron. I don't think he'll get up there. He's too old. Um, you know, he could close in on Ruth. He may get close, but I don't think in the end he'll pass him. I think it'll be real close. I think he'll get over 700, and then he won't be able to go any farther than that. Uh, but. You know, you never know. I don't. I know we won't pass Bonds. That's a long way to go. That's he's got he's got a hundred homers to hit to get towards Bonds with 762, and that's that's a long way. He's got I believe it's an even hundred. If unless I mean I think he's hit one since, so it's probably 99, maybe 98 now. Uh, but he's still got a long way to go till he catches uh, Barry Bonds. And it doesn't matter most people's in most people's minds Barry Bonds is, doesn't count, but we can you know that we can argue that for for a long long time. Uh, you know, but I think in the end those those should count. Um, and then you move on from from the A Rod thing, and uh, you know we 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 are now about two weeks away, uh, two weeks removed, excuse me, from the uh, from the greatest fight of all time, as people would say. It was not the greatest fight of all time. I paid hundred bucks for it. Me and my buddy sat down and watched it along with my dad. And uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, you know, it was a bad fight. Uh, for people that aren't fans of boxing, I know for boxing people that was a great fight. Love the defense from Mayweather, uh, you know. But for us, we wanted to see some some punching. We didn't really want to see a knockout necessarily. Most people wanted to see it go 12 rounds, a couple of big hits, and you know there were some chances for Pacquiao that he got in there and beat him up. Uh, you know, a couple of times got inside on him and, and, and wailed on him, but then backed up and let Floyd get back into his comfort zone. And, you know, the last four or five rounds, Floyd was just out there playing defense, getting a couple of jabs in, and he never really had a chance. And then you had, you know, the, the storyline come out and say, well, he was boxing uh, with an injury. And, uh, you know, that, you know, all these things of, well, you know, he, he, he's going to be in trouble for doing that. And I think, you know, the state of boxing is in danger. You know, unless you're a true boxing fan, that match wasn't great, like I said. Uh, and, and, you know, people are, are going to stop watching boxing. Um, and it's sad because, you know, I don't want that. You know, I think boxing, you know, it's been an American thing for a long, long time. I mean, people have always enjoyed going to boxing matches. It used to be the thing here in the United States, that and baseball. And both have receded. Um, but that fight hurt it. You know, people that are just casual boxer, boxing fans uh, like me who bought that fight and said, well, we're going to see a good fight here. This is supposed to be the greatest one of all time. You have to buy it to see it. And it just wasn't that great. You know, I was disappointed. Um, you know, and I, I, I think... You know, and and then the in, you know with the injury thing in my mind, I think it's unbelievable that he's going to get in trouble for that. You know, I think that shows. I mean, in, in any other sport, in hockey, if you come back out on the ice after an injury, you are praised. In football, if you come back after you know having a severe injury, you're praised. You come back in basketball having an injury, you're praised. Any other sport, you're praised. 
But in boxing, you get penalized for going out there and trying your hardest when you got a shoulder injury. Now, me, personally, I don't know if he had the shoulder injury coming in. I think he may have injured it in the during the fight, but he wanted to seem like you know, he had the advantage, and he said after, you know, because afterwards he said, I think it was, you know, more of a play on the fact that he, he didn't want to embarrass himself too much because he said he thought he won the fight, uh, which I could not believe that. I, I don't think, you know, that he won the fight by any means. Um, you know, but, you know, as for the state of boxing, it got hurt by that, and I think, um, you know, I, I'm not necessarily buying uh into this next fight, the next big one with Cotto and Alvarez that's supposed to be so big. But I did get a little bit interesting when Alvarez had the knockout uh, just about a week ago now in Houston. He had that big knockout in the third round. And, you know, I mean, it could be a good fight. And I think, honestly, with what is scheduled now, it's the last, it's, it's a last dish effort. That fight has to be good if people buy it. You know, I think they need to really, really need to focus on that. They need to get that thing pumped up. They need to try to get ESPN there. Maybe not as big of coverage, get them there for one day, the coverage of the fight. You know, have the weigh-in on SportsCenter, see if they can't get that. Try to get some of those things going and try to pump up that fight. Because if that fight's not good, if that fight ends up being a snoozer, uh, it could, you know, that could be what finally finishes off boxing. And if it is a snoozer, there have been rumors that, Pac, that Mayweather and Pacquiao could fight again, but then that was erased with the coward comments by Mayweather. And then there's other rumors that Mayweather could fight Alvarez, but if he struggles in that match, you just wonder, you know, would he do that? You know, there's other rumors that, you know, after this next fight that uh, Mayweather has with a guy, I cannot remember his name. Um, uh, if he, you know, if he once he finishes that one, his career's done. He's gonna hang him up. He's gonna relinquish all the bell, all, all the titles, and let someone else try to go after him. Uh, which I don't think will be true. I think he'll still keep fighting, uh, but it won't be as often. Um, but I, like I said, I think Alvarez and Cotto is a latch disc effort, and it, and and if that one doesn't work out, and they, you know, there's no other great fight scheduled, the sport of boxing could be uh, could be down and 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 close to close to being dead uh, pretty soon. Um, and then from there we move on. I know, uh, you know, it's kind of a touchy subject. I know a lot of people don't consider NASCAR to be a sport. Uh, I am a, I, I'm not a huge fan of NASCAR. I used to be when I was younger. Uh, not really, a, you know, a big time obsessed fan now. Um, but, you know, I do like watching the restrictor plate races, and uh, I wanted to talk about that because there have been, uh, you know, there have been player, you know, racers uh, starting to say that they don't really like restrictor plate racing, and we had another huge crash in Talladega uh, just about, you know, just over a week ago. We had uh, an ARCA racer. Uh, his name was, um, was Brad Smith. Uh, he went into the trioval and uh, hit the outside wall, came back to the inside wall, and just absolutely slammed in the inside wall. The whole left side of the car was just destroyed. Um, and he was, he was able to climb from the car. Uh, he was able to be helped from the car. He, I don't think he actually climbed from the car. I wasn't watching the race, uh, but he broke both ankles, and that's a severe injury. And he was lucky uh, that it did happen at Talladega because if it would happen at Daytona, he could have sustained just even worse injuries because uh, there is a safety barrier on the inside wall at Talladega, so we got lucky. And, uh, you know, for anyone that follows NASCAR, we saw the injury to Kyle Busch. You know, he's coming back this week at Charlotte, which is, you know, great. Um, I'm not a huge Kyle Busch fan. Uh, you know, I don't re his, his cocky attitude is something that I don't like, and, and he's had problems off the racetrack, uh, you know, uh, with, with the speeding through neighborhoods going 150 miles an hour, um, you know, and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I hated it for him when he got injured, uh, you know, to lose one of the, 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 uh, the sport of NASCAR's best. You know, he's, he's, he's a good driver regular season-wise. He's not great in, in the postseason, but he's been good. Um, and now, you know, and his hit was pretty bad. I mean, he hit the inside wall at Daytona, and there's no safer barrier there. And I do think they have a point with that. I think safer barriers need to be installed on the interior, of, especially of restrictor plate races, because you're going 200 miles an hour consistently. You are not letting out of the gas. There's no brakes. The only time you brake is if you got a green flag pit stop. And even then, you don't even want to brake then. You just want to keep going. But, I mean... You know, you're going 200 miles an hour, you get turned and you get sent into that wall, there is no stopping it. I mean, you can try all you want. Your car actually can come off the ground. It's going that fast. And you just hit that inside wall, 
And, uh, you know, that, that's been a problem. And, you know, we saw it with the, with the you know, the, the expressed uh, feelings of, you know, anger with the practice and qualifying styles that they had had. Clint Boyer at Daytona earlier this year uh, got into a wreck, and he, uh, he went on a rampage. Not really a rampage, but he went on a slight rant on uh, Fox saying that he didn't think, he did not like the way that they had been going about uh, racing and this qualifying uh, that they had been doing, um, you know, and, you know, at the time, I was a little skeptical, I said, well, he needs, you know, he needs to stop complaining, he needs to just go out there and race, but after this injury to Bush, and after this huge wreck by Smith, you know, I, I think, um, I think there's, you know, safety measures that can be installed, I think the, you know, they need to go back to the old qualifying way, uh, just do that, or, um, you know, maybe even at these tracks, because qualifying can be boring when it's single car, I think maybe you could even just put them by points and just let them go because at these types of tracks, especially Talladega, it doesn't matter what order you line up when. In, I mean, it's it's just a full on race. You got guys that come from can come from forty third and win these races, um, you know. And then, you know, but I, I do think you know I don't, I'm not among these people that think that restricted play racing should be removed from the sport. I actually think uh, they they they. I wish they had more tracks like it, but I know those two are the only ones. They will always be the only ones. I am a person that thinks that they should move the Daytona race into the chase. I think they should have two restricted play races because it'd just be awesome. It's full out action. They're flying around there. I mean, you got 20, 20, 25 cars within a second of each other, breathing right down there. One guy gets turned, there's excitement. And with NASCAR, the thing is, wrecks are what sells. You know, these races that are, you know, going around and, you know, have cautions two or three for debris, and most of it's just green flag racing, it, you know, it gets boring. And that's what I think has turned so many people off to the sport. And that's why I think they have to have, you know, I wish they had more restrictive play races. I wish they had more road races. And that's why the people that want to remove restrictive play racing from the, you know, from the sport are just, just crazy. And they need to, they need to stop. It needs to be made safer, but it does not be, need to be removed uh, from the sport. And as for those, one, uh, you know, the two drivers that got hurt, Bush will be back. And for Brad Smith, I just, I hope that, uh, I, I really hope that he's able to recover. Um, you know, he had another serious injury back in 2003 uh, as well. And, and, and this one, breaking both ankles, I, I just, I hope he's all right, you know, and, and, and he can get back in the race car. And I want to finish up tonight uh, with an interesting story that came out yesterday. Um, I found this one was a really confusing story to me. Uh, Monty Williams, the head coach of the uh, New Orleans Pelicans, now former head coach of the New Orleans Pelicans, he was fired. Um, you know, after what I thought was a great year, I thought uh, he had a, he had just an unbelievable season out there for a team that really only had one superstar player. They had good guys around him and Gordon. Uh, you know, and a, and a couple other plays, and Ryan Anderson, no one, no one great. Uh, Anthony Davis was great. You know, Anthony Davis led them to the playoffs. Uh, you know, but he, he won, you know, 45 games out of the Western Conference, which is hard, uh, especially with a team that is under-talented. And they beat out the Thunder, making the playoffs with the living triple-double, uh, Russell Westbrook, who's just a, just a god at the, at the sport, especially a point guard. The man uh, can play, and I know, you know, I know I'm going to receive some, some definite... Uh, dislikes on, on that one that I think uh, Russell Westbrook's great. But I do think Russell Westbrook is really that good. If you don't see point guards that go out there and, and put up triple doubles uh, with a snap of a finger. He had that streak going on. That was just crazy. I mean, I think everyone was involved in that insanity. If you follow any sort of NBA, you love that. Uh, but back to the Pelicans. You know, that firing I thought was really confusing. And, you know, Monty Williams, I thought he was a good coach. He's not the most vocal coach. He's not the most known coach. Not everyone... You know, knows Monty Williams by name, like, you know, Spolstra, like, you know, you know, Popovich, you know, Thibodeau, guys like that. Monty Williams was just a guy that, you know, he went out there and he did his job. And he got them to the playoffs. Uh, the Warriors series was, you know, they, I didn't expect them to come out and beat the Warriors. Uh, I did think they would win at least one game. And they should have. That one game, and that wasn't his fault. The players just really stopped playing. And Seth Curry hit that amazing shot. Um early to knock them out, but, you know, I, when I saw that yesterday, I said, you know, to myself, you know, I, initially my reaction was shock, and then, you know, within a couple of minutes, I turned and said, they have, I said to myself, they have to have someone in mind that they're going after, and Twitter was blowing up, 
so many people saying Scotty Brooks is the man that they should go after. And I do think Scotty Brooks is a decent fit there, but Scotty Brooks can't win the playoffs. Um, you know, I know he got them to the finals that one year uh, as coach. I don't think he, it was really him. I think that was Durant playing really well and Westbrook playing well. Um, you know, and everyone coming together. But I think he would be a solid fit there. Although, to me, I would rather keep Monty Williams just for the fact that he knows these players. He's been around them. And I do think this hurts them in, with the standing of Anthony Davis. Because Monty Williams, I really think that him and Monty Williams had a decent connection. They weren't really buddy-buddy. They're not giving each other hugs and freaking out. And, you know, he's not always near them hanging out. But, you know, I think he respected Monty Williams. And I think Monty Williams made him a good player. And now he's got to find a whole new coaching staff. Um, you know, I don't know if Scott Brooks is going to be the coach. We have no idea where they're going. They could go into the college ranks and try to get someone, maybe like the Thunder did. You know, uh, th there are other coaches that we know will be let go. Um, you know, they could go after an assistant. You know, guys like, uh, you know, names that could be fleshed out. I know the Knicks were thinking about going after Patrick Ewing. never did that. I don't know if they he would be close to that level of what they want. Um, you know, there's plenty of other guy, you know, other assistants that are out there that they could they could attempt to go after. Um, but I think, you know, ultimately, I, I think th their future is damaged by firing Monty Williams. And I was confused by it. I said to myself, I don't understand why you would fire a guy like that. And you know, I hope he has success. You know, wherever he goes, if he's an assistant coach or you know whatever he turn, you know, whatever he ends up becoming, um, because you know. It, I, I generally respected him as a coach. You know, he, he led them to the playoffs. He did a good job. And, uh, you know, I just hate it for him that he got fired. And with that, uh, I'm going to, you know, close down the show here. Uh, you know, uh, I thank anyone for uh, anyone that's going to watch this. I uh, hope I can get up there and just uh, try to get some people to view this. And if you could, just uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I will be doing this every week. Try to tell your friends. I'm going to put a, uh, a a tweet out on on uh, Twitter. I'll be putting that out there. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll I'll try to get some things going on Instagram as well, uh, trying to promote the show. And uh, you know, I hope uh, everyone will, will keep watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you liked it, leave a comment. If you didn't like it, leave a comment. Give me some constructive criticism. And uh, you know, uh, thank you for watching. And uh, we'll see you next Wednesday.